The tree is broken, but it's still strong and it's still standing. It's like that Hemingway quote, life breaks everybody. It's just some people are stronger at the broken places. You know, I thought long and hard about doing this video. It, it isn't just a casual thing. I actually sat down and, and talked to my family about it. Things that things that I, I wanted to tell you all. You you have been on this this journey with me to find my family and to understand my ancestors and there are some things I need to tell you or you won't understand. This book is Irish Love Poems and this has always been one of my favorite books. Before I knew about my family coming over from Central Ireland. Hey everybody, I'm so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I love it so much that you do that. So I hope you had a great week. I had, of course, I don't have to say it, an insane week, um, but I do want, I do want to say thank you to, to so many of you who left such beautiful comments on my video last week about uh, how after 64 years I found out who my father is. So you were so loving and supportive, and you cried right with me. So how do I thank you? I can't. Well, I. I I'm going to try. Anyway, every February, uh, in honor of my mother who had the most beautiful skin, I do uh, my nighttime skincare routine. And so I was going to do that this week because so many things have changed, but I just couldn't get into the swing of it. And I think it was because, well, we all have unfinished business. I mean, you guys are going on this journey with me for me to find my family and learn about my ancestors. And we're all packing a suitcase and we're all taking this journey together. Well, for us to do that, you have a lot of questions. And I feel like I need, I need to take some time and answer your questions about my family, no matter how personal or how painful. I think I need to answer these questions. So the same questions kept coming up. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write down those questions and I'm going to answer them and that's what uh, that's what I'm going to do. And the first question I am tackling is a question that mostly strangers have left on my video. And it's kind of a twofold question. And one is, if I'm a woman and I send in my DNA and I don't have a Y chromosome, am I still going to see my father's uh, side of m my DNA, my family? And yes, yes, you will. Forget, forget all that stuff about the Y chromosome. <laughs> the DNA test that Ancestry does and what these other companies do is a different type of DNA test. And it is going to show you your father's side of the family and your mother's side. So 
and if you're anything like me, it's it's not it's a no-brainer. Which <laughs> on my mother's side, it all comes out Italian, and on my father's side, it's English and French. So it's it when you know they match you up with people who share your DNA. So they make it very very simple for you to know which side uh, you're looking at. I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that when you're trying to find your father, but at least you know the family. At least you start to see people that look like you. It's, it's so exciting. Uh, the other question you asked me is, how long did it take for me to find my father? And it took me about one week. One week of just knowing a name my mother told me his name was William Moore and he was from Georgia and it turned out to be my father was William M. Moore Jr. from Georgia so yeah one week one week and my life changed forever so it can happen to you too the next question that I wanted to answer has come from most people that are the very closest to me and they're saying have you contacted your half brother what's taking you so long are you gonna call him are you gonna write him what's going on with this and um, you know I I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do and there's a lot to it uh, my uh, half-brother, uh, he is here in Michigan. He was born in 1943, and uh, I am born in 1955. I acted like I forgot the year I was born. But, um, so there is an age difference, but I know that's ridiculous. Uh, I guess the circumstances of, of my half-brother, his birth, uh, what happened to my mother uh, during that whole time frame. Uh, I, I need to process that more. I need more time. And it has, my half-brother has something to do with how my mother and I lost, lost my dad, my father. So, and I'm not blaming him. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just saying that I'm not at all ready to go down that road. You know, the next question that kept coming up is, what did my mother tell me about my father? Did she tell me a name? And why didn't I believe the things that, that my mother uh, said about my father? Why did I say in a video that her story kept changing? And I know that sounds harsh, but it, that was asked in a very loving way. And I think that you deserve an answer. And my mama, uh, when she was uh, pregnant with me, uh, and my father went away, uh, she married uh, the drummer in her band uh, to give me a name. Uh, but, but anyway, they divorced and he never came to see me and she felt really bad that I felt that my, my real father didn't ever come see me. So she felt, when I was nine years old, that I deserved the truth. So she said to me, she sat me down and, and she said, I just want you to know that the man that you thought was your father, well, he was your stepfather. And your real father was named William Moore. And he was handsome and a beautiful man from the south, from Georgia. And he was an architect. And we fell in love and so on and so forth. But she told me this whole beautiful romantic story about my father and his name and where he was from and it was beautiful and I loved it and, and I, I wrote stories about it and I fantasized about him and I I just wanted I wanted to meet him so bad I, I was just a little girl I would draw pictures of him what I thought he looked like well fast forward to my teen years and beyond my mother past that day she never wanted to talk about him I mean the his name never changed it was always 
it was always William Moore, Bill Moore from Georgia. That was always what she would say. But she would kind of drift off. It was kind of like the bridges of Madison County. She, she just didn't want to talk about it. It was as if she loved him so much. She just, she didn't want to talk about him. Later on, in my teens and beyond, she she would say, I thought I saw your father the other day. Uh, there was a man that looked just like your father. Maybe it was him. And I thought, well, she told me he was from Georgia. Now she's saying she thought she saw him. Um, one night she joked, you know, that astronaut on TV, that could be your father. That looks just like, I mean, it seemed to me like her story was changing. So in my adulthood, in my 40s, I, I, I would say to my husband, I, my mama keeps changing the story on my dad. I don't even know now if William Moore is really his name. So that is why. I, I hope I explained that right, but it's complicated. But maybe her story didn't change as much as I thought it did. The question many of you have asked me is if my mother ever remarried or if I am an only child or if I have brothers or sisters and yes I am an only child and my mother uh, never did remarry. Um, so uh, you also asked me who was the biggest influence on me growing up and that would be my grandfather. We, we moved to his home uh, when I was seven years old and um, that's where I grew up in my grandfather's house. My grandfather passed away when I was 10 years old, but uh, I cherish those, those 10 years that I had with my grandfather. He was a great man. The number one question that I have gotten is why in the world did my mother and my father not get married? They were obviously in love. She was pregnant with me. He knew it. So why didn't they get married? For me to explain to you why my mother and father didn't get married in 1954, I'm going to have to take you back to 1943 for a minute. My mother was 18 years old. She was Catholic. She was unmarried and she was pregnant. And she didn't have a, a boyfriend. She, she was a, a troubled girl. She you know, she had a rough time of it. It was the depression. Uh, there were there were family dynamics that were very harsh. My my grandmother drank too much. My mother was Catholic, pregnant, not married, and in 1943 they had to hush it up. So they sent my mother to a mental institution. They sent her to the Kalamazoo State Hospital, and there she stayed for six months until she had her baby, my half-brother. After she had her baby, my family came and uh, they took the little boy and they, they gave him to a family at church who had been trying to have a child for a very, very long time. Uh, a, a lovely family in Cedar Springs. And that's where my mother's child went. And shortly thereafter, after she gave birth to my half-brother, she was released from Kalamazoo State Hospital, to which she resumed her life. So why didn't my father marry my mother? They were young and they were beautiful. They were in love. They were pregnant. What happened? Well, they'd been dating for about six months and they were going for their... Um, uh, marriage license and uh, my father uh, came over to my grandfather's house and was waiting for my mother to get ready. My step-grandmother Isabel came in the room and said well hello Mr. Moore so so good to see you I heard you're gonna marry Pat that's amazing it's it's incredible that that you would actually take a chance and marry a woman who's been in a mental hospital that's really something. My father was, my father never heard it. My, my father didn't know my mother had had a child and my father didn't know that 
they had put her in Kalamazoo. You know, I can just see my mother now, you know, she spent an hour getting ready and looking all pretty and she comes out and my father's gone. He's long gone. She, she wouldn't see him for weeks. Not for weeks. But you have to, I think, remember the time. 1954, mental illness. My mother, I guess, wasn't honest with him. You know, I don't know every detail here, but I, th I think my father just panicked. But he came back. He came back. He came back from my mother. He thought it over. His, his own mother had died when he was seven years old. I, I, I don't know what that has to do with the tea in China, but I just feel it has something to do with why he came back. That no matter what, he... It was alright. Maybe my mom should have told him those things. Maybe he, he was afraid of the unknown, but he came back, but it was too late. My mother had already married another man so, so she could have me, that her baby would be born in wedlock. I mean, I, I have to look at this from my mother's point of view too. The last time, I mean, my God, they carted her off to a, a mental hospital. They said she was crazy. I mean, that wasn't going to happen again to her. The man she loved took off. She, For all she knew, they just, they take this baby away from her too. So she married, she married a guy in the band that had a crush on her, my stepfather. So when my father came back, when he came back for us, it was too late. In the four years that I've been on YouTube, this has been the most difficult video for me to do. But I think it will turn out to be probably the most rewarding. And I, I think that, you know, even though I am like completely drained, I, I feel so good that I... I that I told you the story and, and I think that this is an American story that this story isn't just unique to my family so there were so many injustices done to young women who found themselves young and pregnant and not married and it happened in 1943 and it happened in 1955 and it happened in 1970 and beyond perhaps even to this day. So, for those of you who might think, oh my gosh, her mom wouldn't approve of her uh, telling those things about the family. Yeah, she would. She would be okay with it. She would be so proud that I wasn't ashamed because my mom did live with shame. And and I would tell her later on in life always, Mom, there is no shame to any of this. People shouldn't, shouldn't feel shame about skeletons in their closet. That time is over. This is 2019. And I'm going to talk about what I want, when I want, and how I want. And... This is my family's story, and I shared it with you because I want you to know why I want to find my father's family. I want to see, I want to see his picture. I want to write the army, and I want to get his army portrait. I want to know why he didn't remarry, why he never married. I want to know why he didn't have any children. I want to know why he died alone. I, I'm coming up with no answers right now. And I'm growing a little bit impatient, but I'm like a tank. <laughs> and, and I am not quitting until I get these answers. And after, you know, if you've been with me this long in this video, you know exactly why I have to keep going. 
and <laughs> And, and we all have our suitcases packed. We're all on this journey together. And I'm never ever going to go this deep again in, into the backstory of why it's so important for me to find my father and to tell the story of my mother and father. But now you know. And now, now you've got some skin in this game. And it means the world to me. It truly does. It truly does. And I've always said it, that even death can't stop all that love that just swirls around us. Let's try this again. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I loved every second of it and then some. So please have yourself a wonderful brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see us, okay? Okay, it's a deal. Life breaks everybody. It's just some people are stronger at the broken places. <laughs>